Hi, welcome, I'm Arian. In this video, I have prepared something a little bit advanced and we're gonna go over this model in this video. Hi, welcome, I'm Arian. I help engineers and creative minds to learn SOLIDWORKS and bring their ideas into reality. So if this is something for you, subscribe to the channel right now. In this video, unlike the previous videos, I decided to move away from the beginner material and do something advanced. When I say advanced, it doesn't mean you cannot do it. It means you may have difficulties doing it on your own, thinking about the steps without any guidance, because the tools that I'm gonna use to create this model that you see on your screen right now are consists of creating custom planes, working with surface modeling, a lot of surface modeling tools, a lot of irregular tools that you don't find on your default menu on SOLIDWORKS and so on and so forth. So that's why I consider this advanced. Oh, and your base sketch is a 3D sketch. So definitely advanced. And it's a good way to measure my audience, you, and see if you actually like to learn these kind of modelings. Because even though it's difficult, or despite the fact that it's difficult, it will allow you to create a lot of complicated models that you cannot do any other way, right? Let's do it. All right, fellas, now it's time to get started and do this. Be prepared because as you can see from my design tree, you can see how many planes and sketches have I uh, used. It could be less, but it's just for the convenience and the comfort that comes with it. I did a little bit of overdoing and these are some of the tools that you probably haven't seen before, but we're going to use all of them to create something like this. And if you want to create something like the thumbnail, all I did is use to, uh, I use the move body copy and then copy it. It's, it's very simple actually. And you do something like this and then increase the increments and then you get that sphere or whatever. Anyways. The idea of creating something like this is to create the base sketch for it first. And the base sketch of something like this, as I said, is a 3D sketch and 3D sketches need preparations because we're going to use, we can go ahead and use a 3D sketch immediately without needing any planes, but our sketch is definitely not going to be symmetrical. In order to have our 3D sketch bounded and symmetric, we're going to have to prepare some points on different planes. So everything starts by selecting the front plane and drawing a vertical center line and rebuilding the sketch. That's it. This center line is going to be used as the center of rotation when we're going to create some custom planes. This is an advanced video, so I'm not going to explain how I'm going to create planes. If you don't know these, uh, this is not the video for you, but look. So I have so many planes, uh, six of them. Not that I need six because there are 180 degrees apart from each other. For example, plane four and plane eight technically could be one. All I need is three planes. One of them was the front plane. So I needed to create two more planes, but it's just for the sake of understanding the situation better. We're going to start by picking any of these planes, doesn't matter. Um, we're going to place a point on it. Then I'm going to distance this point from this origin 30 millimeters. And let's say the height of it could be 15, half that. Then we rebuild. All right. That was on this plane. Now on the other plane, I'm going to activate the sketch. Again, another point. Just like the last one, the distance from the origin is going to be 30, but this time I'm going to set the height also to 30, not 15. So it looks like this. We're going to continue doing this uh, one in a row. So 15, 30, 30, 30, 15, 30, 30, 30, something like that. This is a 1530, this is a 3030, this is going to be a 1530 again. So how do we do that? We place a point. This is going to be 30 and this is going to be 15 again. Rebuild. 
Now I'm going to speed up the video at this point. You don't need to see all of it. All right. Now that we have our points, I'm going to hide the planes. Or actually, we could just leave it there. No need to hide any planes. And we go to sketch tab, 3D sketch, and pick spline. And we're going to connect the points in the right order. This way, our 3D spline is going to look very symmetric and organized. That's it. At this point, I can go ahead and hide the planes. They have served their purpose. No need to use them anymore. And done. Now, I need another spline exactly like this. And instead of just uh, redoing that lengthy process, I'm gonna do a shortcut and that would be going to the surface tab, use field surface and create any type of surface because we only need the edge of that. The surface is absolutely irrelevant. Also, I don't need to see the points, so I'm gonna hide them as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate my surface body by going to the features tab and use move copy bodies and copy it by maybe going up five we're going to remember that value because we're going to go down five again this time before i move it down i'm going to go to features and use scale and scale it by 1.5 now we use move copy again this time we uncheck copy and we move it down minus five or we move it down five and click ok now at this point all i have to do is to go to the sketch tab and activate the 3D sketch because I'm gonna convert the outer edge of the scaled surface into a 3D sketch by selecting it and clicking on convert entities. Now at this point, I can actually hide the bigger component and the smaller component already has this sketch. All I have to do is to make it shown and hide it as well. Now, this is what I am left with. Back to surface tab, we can use field surface and create a surface like this. And also we can hide our initial sketch. We have the option of thicken. We can thicken this for maybe, I don't know, two. Click OK. And that's it. That's pretty much it. But there is tons you can do to make it look better. For example, if I go to the features tab, select this component, Again, check the copy and then rotate it 45 degrees like this. Then I will end up with something like that, which was what I showed you here. However, I have already combined these two, which we can do and then take it from there. Select them and then combine them. Now, if you want to clean this up because the edges are a little bit rough, look at this. We can select this plane and then actually get rid of the edges and we can redo it for the interior or the inner circle and do it here done now this is what it is and we can do the last aesthetic step let's select all above and below's then click OK and that's it that was a graphical error all right fellas this is the base model that I just wanted to show you you saw what we did so many planes and sketches and so many rare tools that you usually don't use when creating normal stuff on SOLIDWORKS. But some complicated looking stuff actually do need these features. So let me see if I can use this sketch. I can. Um, flip the direction. Um, 20. Up. 
Look at that. Kind of looks like a stent. We can even combine these together. And click OK. Now we have one solid body. If you want to 3D print this, I think it would come out as something good looking. Maybe you can make a vase out of it. And technically I should end the video right here, but I just wanted to see what happens if I try to taper this model. Flex is a very complicated feature on SolidWorks and sometimes uh, it takes long for SolidWorks to calculate and perform this task. So if it works, we can see the preview of how it approximately could look like. It looks more like a vase with a smaller diameter on the bottom and a bigger diameter on the top. And if you're really going to create a vase uh, or model of vase, you can close the bottom half and or, or top half. I don't know, depending on what kind of vase you want to create. And that's it. Yeah. So it worked. And this is how it looks. I actually can make this the thumbnail of this video. Uh, I might actually do that. Sure, why not? Right. I hope you liked it. First of all, like the video and subscribe if any of this information in this video that I covered were new to you. So if you learned something, please do me a favor and hit that like button right now. And stay tuned because more videos are coming. But before I say goodbye, there is one tip that I want to include in this video because one of you guys left a comment on the previous video asked me how you can turn your uh, dimension from uh, showing the diameter to showing the radius when it comes to a circle in SOLIDWORKS. So uh, I promised him that I will cover that in this video and this is delivering on that promise. All you have to do, buddy, is to delete that dimension, first of all. When you're going to readjust it, click here. And before you click OK, whatever value you want to enter, go to the property manager of your dimension and go to the leaders tab. Or let's just click OK and then go to leaders tab. Then over here, you can switch from the diameter mode to radius. And then it shows you the radius. As easy as that. That was the tip.